In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at the ArcGIS Pro Contents pane. So your Contents pane by default shows up on the left-hand side of the ArcGIS Pro interface. Um, and we'll kind of start with just some of the basic functionality found in the Contents pane. Uh, there are six buttons across the top of the Contents pane, uh, just below the search function. Uh, they are list by drawing order, which is the default, list by data source, list by selection, list by editing, list by snapping, and list by labeling. So we'll start with uh, the default, which is uh, list by drawing order. This is uh, pretty much the same interface and functionality that you had in ArcMap, so nothing really new uh, from that perspective if you're coming over from ArcMap. Um, this is just simply a listing of all the layers that you've added uh, to the current map, along with uh, any base maps you may, may have added. Of course, you can only add one base map uh, to any particular map, but uh, your base map should be listed there as well. Um, of course, you can also initiate uh, the symbology for any of these layers as well by either right-clicking and selecting a different color, or uh, if you left-click, that will bring up the symbology gallery that you see here. Uh, so those are easy ways to change the symbology of a layer if you need to do that. There are more complex um, symbology renderings that you can define for layers as well, but we're not going to hit that in this uh, particular demonstration. Uh, but anyway, so listing of layers, uh, the drawing order is going to be top, is going to be bottom up. So the layer at the bottom will draw first, followed by the next uh, layer, in this case parcels, then city limits, lakes and ponds, creeks and streams. So the, the drawing order is, is bottom up. Uh, which means that you do have to be careful, of course, with polygon layers and, and obscuring poly the possibility that you may obscure a line or, or point layer with a polygon layer. Uh, so in general, your polygon layers will be below your line and your point layers unless you have a transparency that you've defined on, uh, on a polygon layer. All right, so... Um, so that's a list by drawing order. Uh, uh, from the, uh, you can also access the map properties from here as well. So if you right click, uh, you do have the ability to add additional layers, uh, add new group layers, set reference scales. Uh, you can access some labeling functionality, uh, you know, edit and view metadata, reorder the layers if you want, save as a map file. You can also access map properties from here. So a lot of functionality can be accessed through these context menus. Again, those are initiated by right-clicking. Here I've right-clicked the map itself, so I'm going to get a different set of functions than if I right-click on a layer. If I right-click a layer, I'm going to get a different set of functions here for working with that particular layer as opposed to working with the map itself. Now you may have noticed as well that anytime you click a layer in the contents pane, that initiates the feature layer context menu. We're going to talk about context menus in more detail in a later demonstration but essentially a context menu that is a set of tabs, uh, one or more tabs, that um, is active at some times and it's hidden at other times. So the feature layer context tab uh, tabs become active anytime you click a layer in the contents pane and that consists of appearance, labeling, and data. And those are all tied to whatever layer you've currently selected. Your context menus will always have a different background color. In this case, it's kind of an orange color, uh, but you'll always see those listed in, in different colors. We'll talk more about those in a future demonstration. All right, so uh, moving on down the list then, uh, you also have list by data source, uh, which is essentially the same things we have as what we had with list by drawing order uh, with the addition of uh, a data source indicator that tells you where those layers came from. All right, so that can be handy if you need to very quickly determine where a layer is coming from, right? What geodatabase or what folder or what map service that it's coming from. Uh, list by selection. This is going to give you a listing of all the layers that are part of the current map. And then you can use the checkboxes to define uh, which of these layers should be able to participate in the creation of a selection set. So for example, right now parcels is my only uh, layer that's been marked as selectable. And so what that means is that if I create a selection set, uh, the only features that are going to participate in that selection set are going to be features that uh, are from that parcel layer. So I draw my rectangle, any parcels that intersect that rectangle that I just drew will become part of the selection set. It will also indicate to you how many features uh, from that particular layer, particular layer are currently selected. So pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll go into list by editing in more detail in future demonstrations, but uh, list by editing is gonna be a list of all the layers. You use the check boxes here to define which layers should be editable, which layers are not editable. If you cannot edit a layer for one reason or another, you'll see a little red exclamation point that you can mouse over. It'll tell you why it's not editable. 
A lot of times it's just something like a base map, which is not in a format that's editable. At other times, you may not have permissions to edit certain layers, so you'd get a little red exclamation point in those cases as well. Snapping goes along with editing, right? So you're just defining what layers you can snap to uh, when editing is performed. And then list by labeling, it's gonna be a listing of all the layers that are part of your current map, along with any label classes that have been defined. Now, every layer will have at least one label class that's associated with it. That's gonna be by default called class one. You can add additional labeling classes through the labeling uh, tab. You'll see at the top here, there's the ability under classes to create label classes. That allows you to create multiple label classes. Each label class can have its own set of labeling properties. So uh, this provides you with an interface that allows you to turn those classes on and off pretty quickly if you need to switch from one uh, type of labeling to another type of labeling. Uh, and that's pretty much it as far as uh, functionality. Uh, there, there are additional functions here as well that allows you to, to filter. Right? So you, there's a filter here that allows you to filter by visible or not visible, by active query. Right? Just different ways that you can filter what you're seeing in the contents pane. And of course, this is searchable as well. So you have the ability to search for things. Not typically necessary unless you have a lot of layers here. But, uh, but if you do, there's a search function. Now, this uh, contents pane can also be... Uh, you know, made larger or made smaller, so it can be expanded or shrunk down in place. You can also pick it up and move it around. So some people like to maybe move it to a different location on the interface. You can pick it up and drag it. And you'll notice as you start dragging, you get these little indicators, right? And basically you just pick it up and drag it to wherever you want it to go and drop it, right? So if I want it to go, for example, here, uh, I just drag it on top of that and it moves uh, to that location. So again, it's just a matter of picking it up, dragging it to a different, different location, and dropping it, all right? And that applies to all the panes in, in ArcGIS Pro. So the same thing could be done with your map, uh, your attribute table view, your catalog pane. Any of these panes uh, have that capability of, of uh, um, being made larger or smaller, or, or you can move them to different locations on the interface. All right, that is uh, all I wanted to uh, cover for now, just to kind of give you highlights of, of the contents pane. And uh, thank you for joining me, and we'll see you next time.